Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming today. Appreciate it. Obviously, we are, uh, we've been on a long, long tour here, winding down. London today, tomorrow Dublin. We have been in Rio, LA, Las Vegas, Boston, Montreal, New York, and this is the, uh, the last leg of the tour. We are promoting UFC 189, Aldo versus McGregor. It is Saturday, July 11th at the MGM Grand Garden Arena during International Fight Week in Las Vegas. This is a little more relaxed than we've been used to on this trip. <laughs> Who's got the first question? Raise your hand and they will bring you a microphone. Um, my first question is for Jose and Connor. Uh, if you could just talk to us about what the last uh, couple of weeks have been like, especially with the cameras. Um, it's been great. We've got to see the world. We've got to travel the world. We've got looked after in every city we've went. And as, as Dana said, every, every city and every place has had its own atmosphere and its own energy. So it's brilliant to get out and see the world. I think it's the right time for us to come and do this. It's still a long way away from the fight. There's no way to come. There's still that intensity, you know, we, we, we head into camp with that intensity. With all of this past 10 days or whatever the trip was, this is, this is all energy to take in, into camp to, to, prepare, to prepare for war. So it's, it's been a phenomenal trip and um, I am happy to have, to have made it because without me, it would not have happened. Simple as that. Without me... 50 people would not be here today. So I'm happy that I'm doing this for the sport and I'm changing the face of the game. For me, it's normal. I think it's our work. I've done other discussions, but it's not as long as this. Of course, it's the good side, the bad side. We know many cities, different locations, but it's always good because we don't sleep well, we don't sleep well, but it's our work. We have to do it. I think it's great, I think it's tranquil, I don't have any problem. Is uh, normal. I really enjoy to do this. Uh, there's a good side and a bad side for this. Um, the staying in different cities, uh, traveling around, uh, but I'm enjoying it and it's my work. Chad Mendes just for Jose Aldo for the belt. Now he fought you before. Why? Why have you decided to do this world tour with McGregor and, for example, not Mendes? Before the Mendes fight? Well, here's the reality. When this fight was happening, we were in our offices, and I told everybody, this is gonna be the biggest fight of the year. This is gonna be the biggest fight of the year. It's gonna be the gate, the, the pay-per-view, everything, this fight's gonna be the biggest. And, uh, and we sat down, we decided that we should do this, this world tour. And I was right, this thing sold out, almost a $7 million gate. Um, biggest gate ever in the United States. The only thing that beat this gate was uh, when we did Toronto, 50, think about this. 56,000 people in Toronto was an $11 million gate. 16,000 people for this one is a $7 million gate. Pretty amazing. Can I just get a bit of uh, clarification on uh, a story which has been going on the last uh, 28 or 48 hours, where um, Jose was apparently um, hit on the back by Connor and he went wild. I mean, just from your own perspective, first off, um, Connor, what exactly happened there? And uh, I wouldn't mind hearing uh, Jose's um, perspective on this as well. I heard I slapped him in the back of the head. I didn't slap him in the back of the head. I put my hand on his neck and I bent him over. Sim, exatamente. Estava sentado, fui segurando o meu capô do meu casaco. Ainda pela minha costas. Então, é, um, não foi um tapa, como o Nego falou, não foi nada. Apenas quis me tocar, não sei porquê. Não sei se ele gostou de mim, alguma coisa. Uh, I don't know, he just grabbed the hoodie of my jacket. Um, it, it wasn't a slap. I don't know if he likes me or not. Question for Connor. You know, the Brimage fight, Holloway, Siva, every time you seem to come in, you know, exactly the same way, relaxed, controlled. 
you know, for you, how is it that you are able to do that when you know you're coming to bigger fights and now you're having uh, a world title fight against Jose Aldo? Yet you, you seem to take them all exactly the same way. I don't know. I have just become comfortable in the uncomfortable. The game, this game, is about finding comfort in in, in uncomfortable situations. That's what it's about. That's the reason I got into combat sport because of situations that would occur where I felt uncomfortable and I would seek comfort in them. So I would show up at the gym and try and get a little bit more better, a little bit more self-defense aware to find comfort in uncomfortable situations. Then I eventually start competing to put myself in even more uncomfortable situations. So my whole career has been about finding comfort in, in the uncomfortable. I didn't get in it to win world titles. I didn't get in it for anything. I just wanted to find comfort in uncomfortable situations and be able to handle any situation. So now when I am in a situation where the average man would crumble, I excel. And it's actually a great question. One of the things that really blew me away was how he handled the pressure of the first time in Boston, the pressure of uh, the first time in, in Dublin, you know, in your hometown. Yeah, I I'm very blown away by how he handles pressure. UFC clearly has an international fan base. So on that note, talk to us about your expansion plans. You're here in London. What does UFC look like five years from now here in Europe? Well, we're going to continue to, you know, we're going to continue to grow and, and, and continue to cultivate talent from, from uh, the UK, from Europe, and, and other parts of the world. Um, this year, the next couple of weeks, we're going into Poland for the first time, um, which, by the way, the, uh, the Krakow fight will actually air on PIC TV here for the first time, which it'll be on open TV here, here in the UK. Um, Krokop versus Gonzaga. We're also going to go into uh, going into South Korea, and we're going to the Philippines for the first time. Uh, it's just, you know, every year we're going we're gonna to pick off some new countries and territories that we haven't been to yet and uh, continue to grow the sport and continue to grow the talent. Question for Connor. Uh, obviously, you're known for your predictions. What's your prediction for this fight? How many rounds is uh, Jose Aldo going to last? Yeah, I've said, it, I've said it before. It will be decided within the first four minutes. He will be out on his feet within the first four minutes. Um, the shots I will need to land will land within that four minute frame. It will be a formality after that. How long he can take, that is up to his, his chin. He has been through war after war after war. Long, long 25 minutes of getting constant head trauma. The brain does not recover. It, 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 it doesn't get younger. So I will hit him and I will hit him very, very hard within that first four minute frame. How long his chin can hold up, we will find out. But it will be wrapped up within four minutes. UFC pay-per-views, typically you've got world, uh, world championship fights, one, sometimes two on the bill. With the growth of the sport over here in Europe, do you think uh, we're going to see a pay-per-view event over here in Europe? Uh, or sort of side questions to that, will we ever see a European fighter defending or fighting for a world championship on European soil in the near future? Yeah, we'll see how things play out over the, uh, over the, next, uh, over the next year or so, and I would say yes. And to follow that up, um, if, if Connor were to be successful on July 11th, is that dream of a stadium event in Ireland completely dead, or is that still something that you're, you're looking at the, the, the uh, logistics of maybe further down the line? Yeah, there were, you know, holding events over in Dublin a lot harder than I expected it to be. I mean, even this, this press tour wanted to close down, you know, whatever the big street is there, you know, the, uh, and do it in the, in the street. They, would, they didn't, wouldn't let us, uh, the arena there, will only let you go to a certain time, and obviously, with the pay-per-view timing on us, we needed to go later. Um, so we, we've had some logistical problems there, but I'm, I'm very confident that uh, should he win the title, we could fix those and we could work them out. Question for Connor, please. With, obviously, you spoke earlier on about your evolution, and you alluded to a couple of defeats. With Joe Duffy coming towards the UFC, is that something you feel the need to rectify? Yeah, one hundred percent. I wish I wish Joe well. Um, of course, if the fight presents itself, I will take it. Um, we fought in a different era. Essentially, we fought in the amateurs. And like I said, I was never. I was caught in the educational process. I was never once beat. I was never once hit. Even even if they signed the Lithuanian kid that beat me many many years before that, even again, I would I would definitely have my eyes on him. But we will see how it plays out. Times have changed. Now I am now I am sitting on the world title. 
So we will see how it plays out, but I'm definitely uh, interested in that, of course. Uh, win or lose this fight, how long will you be staying at featherweight and will you consider going to lightweight? When I win, when I win the fight, um, that depends. We will see. I definitely have my eyes on the lightweight division. I came into this company as a two-weight world champion. I simply vacated the belts because I was with a new promotion. I am a lightweight world champion and I am a featherweight world champion. I am the only Irish man, the only European to hold belts consecutively. It has never been done before. So, most certainly I am looking to replicate that achievement on the biggest stage, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. So, 